as these uh, numbers come in throughout the night. So as you can see, with a lot of uh, Mr. Crosby supporters uh, keeping their eyes on the screen, waiting for more numbers to come in, and uh, trying to sort of absorb the moment. And uh, you can actually feel the tension. A lot of people who don't actually cover politics don't sort of understand that a lot of people really invest themselves in this kind of thing. And they've been working really hard, whether you're a Tory or a Democrat or Liberal. Uh, most of the people in this room have been working very, very hard for Mr. Crosby, as is certainly true for the other campaigns with Paul Antle and uh, with Kerry Claire Neal as well, working hard to try to get their candidate elected. So this is what it all comes down to. Uh, as far as the results go, I don't see too much movement right now with the polls. Again, it's uh, Mr. Antle at 111, Chess Crosby at 98, and uh, Kerry Claire Neal at uh, 29. But that's just with two uh, polls uh, starting to report here. And we have a total of uh, 35 polls uh, left to report. So we'll see how that goes. But as you can see, uh, if you actually take a look, you'll see a bit of sweat running down it, people's brows it's here. Very, it's, it's very tense in here, yeah, and no. it's, it's been like this. We've been here since about 5 o'clock, and uh, they wouldn't let us into the headquarters. Our colleague Ryan Cook was allowed in the Liberal headquarters, but we weren't allowed in this one because they didn't want us here because they were too busy trying to get the last-minute people to get out to vote. So that was up until the polls closed 20 minutes ago. So for the last three hours, they didn't. They didn't, they didn't allow us in until 8 p.m. So. Right. Well, it's, it's funny in a sort of dark, humorous way. When I found out that Jeremy wasn't allowed in, I was thinking, okay, well, that must mean that Chess Crosby thinks he's got the thing locked up. He doesn't need any media coverage. No, and the first but thing that happened is when I came in today, one of the volunteers said to me, he said, there are a lot of nervous people in this room, and you can feel that tension here today. Yeah, you certainly can. People are very quiet. Uh, if you're just joining us, I'm Anthony Germain here with Jeremy Eaton. We are at uh, Chess Crosby's headquarters for the by-election in Windsor Lake. The results starting to come in, and uh, will continue as uh, long as we can to bring you those results as they filter through. Of course, one of the interesting things about tonight, the stakes for this, Mr. Crosby himself, he didn't quite say that this is do or die, but he did say it would be a major blow to his chances of forming a government if he lost. So if things don't go Mr. Crosby's way, it's going to be interesting to see. He'll, he'll be, he will definitely be asked the questions by reporters. Mr. Crosby, you said it'd be a blow. It would hurt your chances uh, to form a government. That will lead most political reporters I know will ask the obvious question to Mr. Crosby if it doesn't go his way, which is, are you going to stick around for the election or are you going to step down? So the stakes for Mr. Crosby, and that's the reason we started our coverage here tonight, the stakes for Mr. Crosby are very, very high. Should he win, uh, then he does something which is very significant, not just because it gets him a seat, but he can point to the fact that last November the Tories won a by-election in Mount Pearl North, and he can try to claim, and will claim, it's two by-elections in a row, it sends a message. Now, in fairness, to give you some context, we'll come back to that in just a bit. You hear a cheer going up now as uh, the lead has shifted. Uh, and it has shifted, but not by very much. Chess Crosby now uh, five votes up on uh, Mr. Antle, and that has certainly uh, brought this room to life. It was, uh, as Jeremy Eaton had suggested, it was, it was quiet a while ago, uh, but that result coming in uh, certainly changed the mood. And there you go once again. Chess Crosby now uh, keeping his lead, but again by 10 votes. And at 192 votes for Mr. Crosby, 182 for Mr. Antle. Uh, and that's, this only, that's only five of 38 polls, so they're getting awfully excited here because the lead has changed, but it still is only a 10-vote lead at this point. So. No, that's true. Both, uh, both candidates with uh, vote percentages, about 42% for Mr. Crosby, 40% for Mr. Antle. This uh, does, you know, it's amazing when you do these things. You think early on, okay, there's only a few polls and all that, but if we get five more polls like this, then we've got a trend, and that means Jeremy and I are going to be here until they count the last ballot and the last box. There's always that possibility. And it's not going to be the last, like the last by election which went on I think for about 45 minutes and then uh, Jim Lester took out that victory it was pretty clear pretty early on but with this it's uh, it's not as clear right. uh, Kerry Neal is putting up a pretty good fight though for a uh, virtually an unknown candidate who just came out of nowhere to run in this by-election but uh, it certainly is interesting now I'm glad that I'm glad that you mentioned that because uh, she's polling right now at 17.6 percent which is above her party and I should mention also Jeremy to people who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube the numbers that we are seeing and it's important to keep this in mind these are the numbers numbers from the scrutineers. So these are people who work for Mr. Crosby at each stations. They're phoning in the HQ saying, hey guys, these are the numbers. So these are not the official numbers, but uh, from my experience, they're usually bang on. And sometimes there's a slight variation. You get some keener who makes a phone call a little too early. But by and large, these numbers uh, will hold, even though, of course, uh, they can't be accountable for the uh, the official result. Once again, you are watching a special live Facebook and YouTube coverage of the uh, by-election results in Windsor Lake. I'm Anthony Germain here with uh, Jeremy Eaton. And and of course, now the room has gone down back to that hush. <laughs> because let's face it, you know, uh, well, you're, you're an athlete. You compete in sports. Uh, you know, when you're winning by uh, 10 votes, 
And now, 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 now you see at this point we don't hear the cheer because now the thing has changed in favor of Mr. Antle. There we go again. Spoke too soon, yeah. Anthony. You spoke too soon. At 239 for Mr. Antle, 227. Sorry, 239 for Mr. Crosby, 227 for Mr. Antle. Uh, so once again, now this is very close. Certainly some elation here. And um, now you're getting the cheer, so just let Tess Crosby supporters enjoy the moment right now. Now we'll see as they come in now. Now there's a bit of a switch. So the lead keeps switching, and I think that's one of the things that makes it. And now Mr. Crosby's back on top. And now the numbers are starting to really come in much quicker, which is the sort of thing you normally see. So the numbers are flowing in. But again, 13, 10, and it just switches one side to the other. We are in a horse race, and it's probably going to be an issue of coming right down to the very end. And I'm going to see if I can get the attention of my cameraman, uh, Ted Dillon, for just one moment, because I want to ask somebody a question. Can I just ask you a quick question? Sure. So what's it like watching the, the lead change? I mean, we're seeing Mr. Crosby, Mr. Antle, it's 10 votes here, 10 votes there. Yeah, uh, it's, what's it's, your heart rate? Oh, it's pretty high. It's nerve-wracking right now, but it just shows that every vote matters, that this district is really close, and that voter engagement is really high. So this is, we're very, we're very hopeful there, but this is just going to go down to the wire. And why are you a chess supporter? Oh, I just like uh, Chester's policies. He's honest. Uh, he's a different form of government. He's really intelligent. And I just think he's a straight shooter, so I really like him. Can I ask you your name? Uh, Josh Taylor. Right. And how old are you? Uh, I'm 38 years old. Right. Because a lot of people and a lot of the sort of internal analysts pundits saying, you know, Chess Crosby certainly appeals to uh, older voters. Oh, yeah. If I may flatter you, you don't oh, look yeah. like an older voter. No, but I'm a voter that's concerned about my future. And his fiscal uh, policy essentially getting uh, our spending under control is very important for my generation. I'm a homeowner. I have my family here. Uh, my future is very important. So uh, I definitely think Chess is the only person with a plan. He's the only person honest enough to address our issue. Right. So. Now, as it stands right now, it's 293 votes for Mr. Crosby, 280 for Mr. Antle. Yeah. Uh, this could be a late night. Oh, it's going to be a late night, but that's what we're in it for. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate your time, and uh, thank you very much. Very well. Thanks. All right. So there you have it. Uh, a dedicated Chess Crosby supporter saying that he's the man uh, who's going to better protect the financial future. That is the kind of campaign that Mr. Crosby tried to run, saying that he was the person. Oh, now we're getting an appointment here. Person in the background saying, actually, basically interpreting that I'm doing my job, essentially, saying that uh, he's leading by 13 votes. So, well, how many polls do we have actually reports? We've got 31 left, so we've got three there. We'll take a look back now at the room and the other people who were gathered here with these results. And again, keeping in mind that these are not the official results, these are the results coming in from uh, the scrutineers. I just heard somebody talk about a nail biter boy. Is that you? Yeah. Do you enjoy nail biters? Absolutely. Well, in that case, you're in luck. Yes, I am. <laughs> The white's on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good line. That's a pretty good line. I'm going, to, I'm going to have to use that at some future point. It's a nail biter, and it's good so long as it bites on the right side. Is what this uh, gentleman just told me. So, are you checking the scores, or what, what are you doing there? No, I'm checking the emails. David, oh, that was fine. So, so why, why are you a su uh, supporter of Mr. Crosby's? Oh, I think he's the best. Yeah. Any particular reason? Yeah, he's got good policies. He's going to do well for this province. We need Chess Crosby. Yeah. I, I noticed the one thing about political campaigns, no matter what party you're in, like a night, like it all comes down to, to tonight, obviously, right? And a lot of hard work. Uh, I sort of look and I see actually a number of people of all ages. And what is it about Mr. Crosby that he was able to actually put this kind of a eclectic team together? I guess it's all the people that want to support Mr. Crosby, all the workers he got out so far, and he had a lot more workers has been, been there as well. Yeah. And. Um, I think it's just putting it all together. It's all coming together tonight. I think we're going to pull this off. All right. He also got in earlier, right? He was the first one in. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, yes. All right. And now, as you see, oh, now the uh, parents, the Paterfamilias and Jane Crosby's. So John Crosby and Jane Crosby uh, entering the room. John Crosby giving the audience a wink. As uh, everyone shows respect, saying hello. Uh, to hello, Mrs. Crosby. How are you? How are you, Jane? We're, we're getting old. Too. So am I. So listen, Jane, your uh, your son is up tonight. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm very hopeful. Mm -hmm. He's done all he can do. So then you leave it to the gods. Right. Yes. You didn't try to warn him to stay out of this game? No. I put, oh, my chest. Yeah. Yeah, we were surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if he's surprised tonight. Anyway, I'll let you enjoy uh, watching the returns, and thank you very much, and good luck. Oh, thank you. All right. I, I All right. didn't realize. Right. <laughs> That's Jane Crosby, of course, um, 
Chess's uh, mom, as everybody in Newfoundland and Labrador knows, Jane. I think there'll be a seat over here for you. All right. So get Miss Crosby to sit. And uh, John Crosby is uh, here as well. So you can see what Crosby has to say. Yeah. Well, you, you never know in an election of who's going to win, so. And do you think that you would be here? Would you have been here collecting the results for the crowd, uh, or, or would you have stayed home in a private setting? No, 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 no. no. Or I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to. Uh, participate and uh, show support for my uh, son. So. All right, Mr. Crosby, appreciate that. Now the cheers that you heard go up there as uh, Mr. Crosby will go and take a seat to uh, watch how his son does tonight. Uh, the cheer you heard is once again one of those lead changes where uh, Chess Crosby, John Crosby's son, uh, is now up by, uh, i got to do the quick math, 11 votes right now. It keeps switching uh, back and forth almost with each announcement. We've got 28 polls left. And uh, this is the kind of trend now that I think it's safe to say, although uh, I'm not exactly a uh, Kreskin of politics, but when you have that many polls, you've got seven polls, 400 votes each, that would suggest that this is going to be very tight right down to the end of the night. So we'll have to wait until more polls come. Now, we do actually have uh, some CBC political uh, advisors, and they will let us know if it's statistically possible to call a winner if we get to that point. Uh, right now, uh, I don't know any statistician in the world is going to call something like this unless we get down uh, right to the close parts here. Right now, Mr. Crosby leading by 400, he has 462, so again, he's only leading by less than 15 votes. So we haven't seen too many leads of more than 10 or 12 no, so far. It's certainly not a runaway, it's certainly not a blowout, that's for sure. But it's, uh, they're very, ex I guess they're very excited despite now another one's just coming in. Yeah. And despite the, the, the clapping and cheering you're hearing in the background, uh, Crosby only beat Ansel in that poll by one vote. There you go. He's still only up by 14 votes. It's like 41.71% to 40.51%. It's still very, very yeah. close. Yeah. Now another one's going to come in, and it's another, well, Angela has with 19 and Crosby with 18, less of a cheer. Still yeah. awfully close. Yeah, and just a, and a lead by uh, about 13 votes or so. And uh, now we see that the lead is one vote, and that lead is switched to Mr. Antle by one vote. So I don't want to sound like a broken record, but 507, 506 uh, to Carrie Neal at 239. Now, an important thing to point out about Ms. Neal, she is taking about 19% of the vote. So in the event, in the event that this actually goes Mr. Crosby's way, a lot of people will be analyzing this by-election to see what it was that uh, Carrie Claire Neal did well, to... Who, who the, she took the votes away exactly. from. Exactly. And, and of course, we'll never know for sure, but uh, common wisdom would suggest that she takes more votes away from Mr. Antle. Not everybody agrees with that analysis, but uh, most smart people do. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, they're virtually tied right now. 545 for Mr. Crosby, 544 for Mr. Antle. She has 20% of the vote right yeah. now. According, now, these are all PC numbers. They're coming from the PCs. These are not the official numbers, but uh, they're pretty close, as Anthony said earlier. But she's bringing in 20% of the yeah. vote. Yeah. She's polling uh, much higher than what the opinion polls say the NDP does poll at, which uh, should she not be successful tonight, and I think at this point that is a safe conclusion to come to, uh, it'll be interesting to see how much of uh, the percentage she does take by the end of the night, because newcomer, uh, newbie, unknown, first time, unknown. unknown, to walk away with one in five votes in a by-election, not too bad at all. So we'll see what happens. I'm Anthony Germain here with Jeremy Eaton. You're watching a special Facebook Live and YouTube coverage from CBCNL as we cover the results of the by-election Grand Falls Windsor. Now again, uh, we have that kind of a hush in the crowd because um, a lot of people talking about how close it is. And see some people in the crowd, they've got their hands on their shoulders, sort of checking things out, and people sort of wiping their brows. It's getting kind of a little bit warm in here. That's uh, the, other, the, other, the other smart thing about politics, especially experienced parties, is you book a small room, and it looks as though there are a thousand people. I'm not saying that to take anything away. There's a nice, good crowd in here, but uh, they booked it quite well. But once again, we see that, you know, once again, the vote results have come in and Mr. Antle winning by one vote again. I mean, the percentage of the vote right now, and there's a, a slight jump for Mr. Crosby, but again, 698 to 694 uh, lead for Mr. Crosby, as you can tell from the people cheering. And uh, Carrie Neal now at uh, 20%. So we'll keep our eyes on how this whole thing goes. Uh, I might actually go and call upon, uh, I see a... Uh, Former, a former premier and the person who stood it down. We'll see if we can get Mr. Davis to come over and talk. Of course, uh, Paul Davis was a premier for a while, as you know, 
uh, also decided to stay on for a bit, as you know, and uh, he is here at uh, Chess Crosby's headquarters, so I'll sort of invite uh, Mr. Davis, good to see you. How are you doing? All, right. All the best. Uh, so uh, what do you make of the excitement of this? This is pretty close. Uh, it is very close, uh, and I, uh, I suspect that it would be. Uh, expect to be close, uh, but you know, I, on the doors I've knocked on, I've, I've uh, talked to a lot of people in the district over the last couple of weeks, and uh, a lot of people are talking about uh, change and looking for change and looking for something, uh, an alternative to the current government. So it's quite clear here that uh, you know, they've, they've, they've thrown everything at this, the, the government, governing party, the Liberals right. have thrown everything at this that they possibly could, and uh, it's a dogfight here. Every vote counts, and this is going to be one of those elections. This is like an old-time Newfoundland and Labrador election night where everyone's tuned in because things are, are close and exciting. But you can feel the excitement in the room. Right? Oh, oh, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Right on cue. <laughs> that was a big, so... That's that a big, uh, uh, big one there. Yeah. That's the biggest. Uh, that's that's the biggest jump of the night, actually. Mr. Crosby now ahead by about 30 votes, 763 to 736. But back to your point. You, you said, uh, now, now we see even larger. So, so look, there a big spread there. So. So we've got 19 polls left to report, and Mr. Crosby has a 56-vote uh, lead right now. What's your sense of these numbers? So we're seeing Mr. Crosby's lead is starting to build. There's an 80 vote lead there now, so uh, you know I think that's pretty significant. But look, it's a long night. Yeah. Until all the polls are in, I wouldn't jump to any conclusions here. But uh, you know, it's been a hard, hard fought battle, and there's a lot of lot of effort put behind uh, all these campaigns, all right. three of them. Uh, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out. We're all we're all sitting on the edge of our seat, sort of thing. So right. it's uh, pretty exciting to watch. And you said, Mr. Davis, that uh, you thought this was going to be tight. What uh, what kind of opponent is Paul Antle? You know, he, look, Paul Antle is. Uh, I mean, give give him his credit. Uh, you know, and this is not over. I'm just asking what no, it's been no, like. No, I know, but like he's, you know, he he speaks very well. Uh, he's speaking right from uh, the liberal the liberal handbook, the liberal guide. Uh, he, he constantly said we and put himself as as uh, as if he was a member of the government today, and he constantly did that. And he spoke uh, consistently about uh, the government policies, and uh, he used the same approach that the liberals have used since 2015. He, uh, Any time there's something negative, he blames somebody else. He diverted, he diverted uh, any responsibility from the from the Liberals who've been in power now for three years, and, uh, and diverted put it right back on on someone else. Constantly did it throughout the campaign. Right. All right. That cheer that you heard there is that Mr. Crosby now has a lead of uh, 90 votes. So the trend for Mr. Crosby is continuing. One last question for you: What has your role been in this campaign? Have you stayed away mostly? Have you have you helped Mr. Crosby? Well, yeah, I was, I was here for them any time they wanted. Uh, I spent uh, my time most of my time by far uh, knocking on doors and uh, and did so with caucus caucus members and a combination of caucus were out uh, were out every day knocking on doors so uh, we had a we had a good time it was a good time for us uh, I always enjoy campaigns and meeting people listening to their concerns and talking to them about politics of the day and uh, we did that as, as a caucus over the last few weeks and uh, I think it was a good it was a good experience for us as well so now we've got two elections next year forget the by-election for tonight a provincial one and a federal one any possibility you might run in one of those elections there's, everything's a possibility. <laughs> Anything's a possibility. Uh, you know, yeah, like, uh, yeah, there's a future ahead in politics. I don't I don't know what my, well, for politics there is. I don't know what my role is going to uh, be in I was wondering that. if Andrew Shear's been giving you a phone call, that's all. Uh, well, you know, I got to know Andrew Shear as uh, when I was leader and he became leader. Uh, I worked closely with Rana Ambrose before that. I think it's very, very important uh, for us to uh, try and tighten and, and improve on those uh, relationships. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to sit I just, just I was like, no, I don't want you to go away now. Uh, so now Mr. Crosby has a vote lead of 110. There are only 14 polls left, and now that lead has gone to 130. And so yeah, that's why you see these these cheers back here. So what can you say? It's almost as if the crowd wants to let <laughs> Mr. Davis off the hook here. Uh, yeah, no, but perhaps, but I can. So so you're not saying no to the possibility. <laughs> It's very important for us to have those. Uh, I think it's very important for us to have those relationships, and uh, and sometimes we're going to have differences of opinion. Yeah. And that's okay too. Okay. Listen. But, but as a provincial politician, yeah. I've always taken the approach that for me, Newfoundland and Labrador, and Newfoundlanders and Labradorians I always come first. All right, Mr. Davis. Good to talk to you. And nice to see you again. Thanks right. very much. Thanks. All right. So that's a story for another day. Now we're seeing uh, an interesting tie right now with a vote lead of about 130 votes for Mr. Crosby. And we have 11 polls left to report. And there we go. And as we see this, uh, 
He's starting to sort of distance himself. Yes, Jeremy. Yeah, so the numbers are coming in a little bit bigger now. Like it's um, So Crosby's taking a lot more of the vote, as you can hear now. But it's jumped out to the biggest lead, and people are starting to get excited. Right now, we all know that my math isn't very good, but it's about 100. That's been documented on here and now, <laughs> on Twitter. I think Munn has a trophy in your name now. It's, it's uh, you know, about 100 and, uh, what, 130 votes-ish. 130, yeah, anyways. Uh, he's starting to take the biggest lead. <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave the adding and subtracting to the professionals. <laughs> but uh, now there's still 10 polls res to report, and we have to remind people that these are all the PC party's numbers. These are not the official numbers. These are from the, the PC party members. But uh, still, the elation is here. That nervous tension that was hanging over this room has yeah. sort of uh, gone away for the time being. No, that's true. But it's interesting in the lulls in between, uh, in between those uh, voting periods where the numbers come in, it gets really, really quiet, right, as it has right now. And as you heard, I was trying to interview Paul Davis, former premier and PC leader. You uh, could the explosion. Blown up, blown up, blown up, And I think he, he was talking about running in federal politics, as far as I could tell. Pretty much. We'll have to go he, back and review he the didn't slam the door. It's another story. <laughs> yeah. I can see him running. Now, who'd be running against? That's uh, Mr. Morrison, I think, isn't it? Yes. Right? All right. Well, anyway, we don't want to get into federal <laughs> politics. We're here for the by-election, but uh, you heard it here first, or you saw it here you first. You saw it here first on Facebook Live. Yeah. I'm Anthony Germain, here with Jeremy Eaton and our CBC NL crew, giving and, you and, uh, the results. Right now, I think Teddy Dillon has a picture of uh, Judy Manning. Some people might uh, remember mm -hmm. her. She former cabinet minister. Former cabinet minister. And Briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so she's here to support, and there's a number of, uh, obviously, you've spoken with Paul Lane, you've spoken with David Brazel, yeah. Keith Hutchings is here. Uh, and a number of other members of the PC party as well. So there's lots of support, lots of support for their candidate here tonight. Certainly is. The uh, Tory, Tory faithful are here as well, as uh, as are uh, Chess Crosby's parents, John Crosby and Jane Crosby, of course. Who literally got the hero's welcome when they walked through the door. Because you could feel the respect and the constant firm applause for the Crosbys um, as they came in here. Of course, they've had quite the political life and uh, I was talking to Jane briefly couldn't really hear I don't know if it actually made it across the mic but I asked her didn't, didn't you try to warn him about getting into this game and Bernie did hear she said no we were surprised she said so I guess I think a lot of people were surprised yeah. like he is 65 years old he had a very successful law firm and people wanted I just think if I was Chess Crosby I'd if, if, my parent, if my parents were John and Crosby and Jane Crosby I'd probably tell them it sounds like they were surprised as the rest of us were yeah no that's true that's true all right, so the people, as you can tell, are uh, still leaning back. A little bit of a, a break here as uh, results are uh, slowly coming in. They sort of come in uh, fits and bursts, so we'll, uh, we'll see if once uh, the next ones get in. So it, the interesting thing perhaps to talk about right now is the actual constitution of the House of Assembly with uh, 27 liberals. I'm trying to do this from memory now without any notes. And, of course, Ted Dillon's going to put me on camera now to make sure I get this right. So 27 liberals two new Democrats, three independents, and one vacancy, which is going to be filled uh, tonight. So this result will have no impact yeah, no, on the fact. There's coming in, so we can just wait and see what happens. Oh, no. Oh, geez. Modest increase. Modest increase, Mr. Crosby's uh, lead. But still, we're only talking about 130 votes. It's uh, 1227, so 1,227 votes for Mr. Crosby, 1,091 for Mr. Antle. And uh, we take a look at the NDP, 587 votes. So uh, Mr. Crosby has a lead, but not enough to actually call it uh, by any means with only uh, 100 or so votes in the lead. However, there are only nine polls left to report. So uh, we'll keep that in mind. And uh, once the CBC uh, decision makers let me know, if we can make an announcement of any kind, I'll let you know. But I think with that margin of error, I should say with that difference, it's, uh, it's just too, it's too tight to actually, uh, to actually do that. So we'll see uh, what we can and cannot do. So it's a slim lead um, right now with 25% polls reporting. So it's still way too close uh, to make a projection with only a quarter of the polls and a quarter of the votes. Interesting thing about this election and the lead up for it, uh, in the advance poll, which usually shows party organization, they had 1,400 votes roughly. Uh, they're the special ballots. and those are people, uh, uh, As far as people in this room are concerned, there are very special ballots that just gave up right there right now. So now we have uh, a lead of about 170 votes for Mr. Antle. So that was a big one because uh, according to the PC numbers, Chess pulled in 63 votes to Antle's 28, but still 21 for, uh, for the NDP candidate. So right now he's sitting at about, uh, geez, almost 160 vote lead there.
All right, as I was uh, trying to mention in terms of the vote coming into this, with 1,400 advance poll, that shows organization and party organization to get that much, 1,400. There are 9,000 eligible voters, so that 1,400, I know it's a lot of math to throw at you and at Jeremy, <laughs> uh, there's more, <laughs> more than 10% in the advance poll, plus then you have the special ballots which came in. So those are people who are at St. Clair's, Waterford, Health Sciences, and I think one uh, patient care clinic. So these are ballots that are sent out for people who aren't well enough to actually walk. Uh, to a polling station. So there are those, those are some of the ballots that actually include us. They were the first ones that actually were reported, as far as I can tell. So you can hear numbers just came in, but you can hear the reaction, which means Antle did, uh, he, he pulled 59 votes to Crosby's 57, but he's still, Crosby still has a sizable lead there now. Yeah. Uh, pulling in, according to the PC numbers, 42% of the vote. But again, Anthony, I'm still surprised that Carrie Neal is doing so well as yeah. she is. Yeah, polling above 20%. Uh, and, uh, and, and also, this is a district that has uh, you know, Tory, Tory, and right-leaning liberal roots. If you think Kathy Dunderdale on this seat, yep. uh, Kathy Bennett, uh, probably to the right of the Liberal Party. Uh, so there are there are those are the kinds of candidates who have had some appeal here. So I think the NDP uh, certainly has nothing to be ashamed about for the new person coming in. I know she campaigned very hard, and uh, you know, as I said, if, she, if you're getting one in five of the voters, uh, you've you struck a chord with with a sizable part of. Uh, of the district. I was actually out with her this morning and uh, there, there were a lot of Carrie Neal signs out on, uh, on a lot of lawns here and there. And I think um, what a lot of people are saying is that I think the general public, uh, we were talking to a guy when we were getting the coffee earlier tonight and he said people are upset with the PC party, people are upset with the Liberal party and their people are looking for a new voice and that's a, a theme that I've heard a lot in person, yeah. something you see a lot on social media as well. So the votes are actually reflecting that now. I don't think people thought she was going to win but uh, she's putting up right. an incredible fight here tonight. Yeah. Very impressive. And. Um she said that she told here and now tonight on CBC News that no matter what happens tonight, that she will actually be, uh, she'll be on the ballot in the next election because we are going to have a provincial election next year. And uh, Carrie Claire Neal said that she will be a candidate. So she may not be successful tonight. In fact, she won't be successful tonight. That, I think, is safe to say. Uh, but she intends to stay in politics. This is her baptism of fire. Perhaps, uh, you know, a year later, having had the experience of a by-election, she might be a formidable candidate. And just because she says she's going to be on the ballot, that doesn't necessarily mean she's going to be on the ballot in this district. Uh, the NDP might decide to put her in a district where she might actually have a, a better chance because they could say she did well in this by-election. Of course, that's all down the road. <laughs> but not too far down the road. It's only about a year away, I guess, until the general well, election. It's interesting you say that. People talk about the provincial election being in a year. There's another train of thought, Jeremy, that if Paul Antle were to win tonight, uh, we all talk about fixed elections, but there's nothing to stop Mr. Ball from actually trying to go in the spring because we know we're likely to have a federal election in the fall. And he will argue, or could argue, uh, listen, I don't want voter confusion, I don't want, and he could go in the spring if he wants to sort of, it's called a snap election, one of strategic reasons for doing that. Uh, but you could also do that at, uh, at some risk. So the next year of politics in this province is going to be very, very interesting, both the provincial and federal level. Which is good. Yeah, it's good to see. Actually, Paul Davis is running for the federal conservatives. Well, well yeah, I know you're... you're <laughs> no, he didn't say that officially, but he didn't slam the door. He didn't slam the door. No, he certainly did not. And I think, you know, he's, he's been the premier of the province. He's been a longtime MHA. He was a longtime uh, member of the RNC. Yep. So he would be, you know, a very popular candidate. I'm sure a party would happily and, take him. And experienced. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Mr. Shear, if he could sign his nomination papers in it, then he probably would. All right, so I'm going to head around back here a little bit, give, uh, give my uh, cameraman more room. Hey, Devin. <laughs> All right. There's um, some. You go for it. And uh, so I notice him starting to pass some of the bubbly around in here as, uh, as this thing gets going. Almost as though they are preparing for a bit of a celebration here. Maybe a bit premature, but uh, hard to say because Mr. Crosby does uh, right now have a lead. He's at uh, 1,347 votes. Paul Antle at 1,178. So that is uh, 150. So that means some more results are going to be coming up, indicating, I suspect, by the cheer that there is uh, more good news for Mr. Crosby. And certainly um, the attitude has shifted from in this room at uh, Chess Crosby's headquarters from kind of a well, tense, uh, tense and even sort of uh, afraid in the beginning. And then, and then and as you can hear, it's uh, become much more positive. So Mr. Crosby enjoying a 164 vote lead right now with uh, seven polls uh, left to report. So it's an interesting district uh, for those of you who are watching, uh, particularly if you're watching Facebook Live or YouTube as our special CBCNL coverage. You 
may not understand that you've actually been here. So many uh, people from across the island uh, come to the commercial part of this district, and I'm talking about Stavanger. If you've been to Costco, then you have actually been through this district. If you come through Major's Path and that part, so the commercial component, uh, business uh, considerations, certainly an important part of uh, what's on a lot of people's minds, not just for the companies and the big box stores and all that, but of course for the people who work in those uh, establishments. Some of them not necessarily living in uh, in this district, but a lot of them do. Um, so that was one of the concerns, uh, one of the considerations, Mr. Crosby, talking about business. And uh, we're going to uh, get a member of caucus uh, here to get a uh, quick comment. Mr. Petten, how are you? All right, Barry Petten is a member of the Conservative Caucus. Uh, what's your sense of how things are going tonight? Well, it's a pretty tight race, as you can yeah. tell by the board. It's, uh, Do you have a heart condition? No, I ran two elections, though. The grand total was 230 votes. I won one the last one, so I'm quite used to this. Of course, not anyone else in this room, probably. So, yeah, it's a tight race, but it's good, two good candidates, and it's, uh, I'm not surprised by this at all. Yeah. It's, uh, You're it's expecting to be this close? Yeah, I mean, we've done a lot of campaigning. We knew we were up against. You know, it's, it's, you know, again, it's two quality candidates, and the best, you know, the voters are never wrong. So, I always say that. When I lost, I said it. When I won, I said it too. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's important to be consistent. It is, it is, actually. No, it's, I mean, it's a tight race. We expected this, and I mean, it's good to see we're holding a lead there now, and right. hopeful that the remainder of the polls will turn our way and we'll get our leader in the House. So, how, how important is it for Mr. Crosby to win tonight? I think it's very important. It's important for democracy. You know, I've said that before. It's, I mean, he's the leader of the opposition. I believe it's very important to have, him, have your leader in the House to stand across the floor to, you know, the leader of the Liberal Party and the leader, of course, the NDP. I think it's it's most important for democracy, but it's very important for our party. I don't, you know, don't kid yourself. We, yeah. we know the importance of it as having your leader elected and just the momentum feel of taking a, this was a liberal seat and the finance minister seat. So, you know, it's important on all, all ends of it, but it's very important to have your leader in the House. I right. really believe that. It's interesting, you know, I remember I was listening to the St. John's Morning Show on CBC Radio 1 and I heard Mr. Crosby call. This is when Kathy Bennett decided that she was going to step down and he essentially announced on the air that he was going to go for this. Yep. Um, were, was, the, was the party establishment surprised that he, he jumped so quickly? No, not at all. I think any seat to come up in St. John's, we were expecting uh, that he would probably jump at it because he had made reference that St. John's would be his preference. So, I mean, outside of St. John's, it would have been probably more difficult. I don't know. Maybe he'd have to answer that. But uh, no, no, we weren't surprised at all. And we were hopeful and we were confident from the beginning that this was a great, good seat for him to run in. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's been a hard battle, but, you know, it's... Yeah. Uh, sometimes Mr. Mr. Crosby's uh, not an orthodox politician. He says things sometimes that, I think, take us reporters by surprise. Now, he didn't exactly say this is do or die, but he did say, I know, a defeat here would make it very difficult for his chances to form the next government. Were you surprised by how far he went? Well, I think that's one of the, the thing, different things that Mr. Crosby is honest. Sometimes he can be honest to a fault. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be Well, politically, honest. you know, when you go that far as a politician, you don't want to paint yourself in a corner. No, exactly. But uh, I guess hats off to him. I mean, we told a lot of voters that the doors would be knocked doors. I mean, that's credit to him. You know, I probably would have more been more measured and waited till the outcome. But he did come out and say it. And that's just credit right. to the person he is. And he, he campaigns on honesty. And I give him full marks for that. There's a little backroom boy saying, Chess, what were you thinking? Oh, no doubt. There was people going, oh, my God. But... In fairness, I give him full marks being honest, and that's something that he uh, he's proud of himself on, and he, he's a man of his word, so I get a lot of respect for that. All right. Well, listen, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So as you can see, uh, a lot of people, a lot of interest, a uh, bit of analysis there. Quite interesting, actually, to see that some people must have thought that Mr. Crosby went pretty far. As I said, it's not that he said this is do or die. If I, if I lose tonight, I'm toast. But he did go fairly far, which is... Not usually what politicians would do. You Usually a lot of politicians do leave that escape hatch open. But he's not a politician. That's I, what he kept saying. Yeah, he's not yeah. a politician, but he, uh, I think he comes from a, a great political line. But, uh, no, and I think that that's some of the things that uh, he has said have taken people a little bit off guard. Like, look at that little profile we did on CBC. Like, you know, Paul Anto played tennis. Karen Neal went berry picking. And he went down to the gun range. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and that, so, you know, he is... Uh, there's a lot, I guess there's a lot, lot more layers, like yeah. an onion, maybe there's a lot more layers of chess crops that the general public doesn't know, because we haven't seen him as much as, say, his, his dad and or Paul Antle, who's been in the right. public eye for a long, long time. And if you missed any of the profiles of the candidates, you want to see uh, Chess Crosby hunting or, <laughs> or Paul Antle playing tennis. If you want to see Fred Hutton shoot a gun and Chrissy Holmes fire a rifle, you should check that out. And if you want to see them play, if you want to see Fred play tennis with Paul Antle or Chrissy go berry picking with Kerry Neal, that's all on our YouTube page, cbc.ca. YouTube slash YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> yeah YouTube here and now you'll get that I think though when uh, when chess was actually doing the firing exercise he was sending he was sending Fred Hutton down the range to set up the targets That's, that didn't actually make the the edit uh, I'm Anthony Germain here seriously reporting it's getting warm in here it uh, is, it Jeremy is Eaton, uh, probably reflection of the tension but let's uh, just recap right now so Mr. Crosby leading by about 160 votes 
uh, over uh, Paul Antle. You can see 42% of uh, the vote so far counted is Mr. Crosby. And it's, I think that is a birthday for Mr. Brazel. It's amazing, you know, tonight on Here and Now, Finance Minister Tom Osborne said it was his birthday. So there must be a lot of politicians. Yes. Yeah. All right. Mr. Brazel, congratulations. Happy birthday. That's good. It's, so, uh, it's freedom, freedom 55 today. I, I thought I'd be announcing my retirement, but I got a few more years left of me, yes. Okay, well, that's good. We'll have to work. So, uh, 55? 55 today. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. All right. And so, you know, Tom Osborne was on here now tonight, the finance minister, and he said it was his birthday today as well. So I went back to Tom when I saw your, your broadcast yep. and said, I'm your elder, Tom. So you You're elder than him? Yes, I am. So you, shh, so you need to respect that. So we've got a little bet on the go. Somebody will have to buy somebody else a, a beverage after okay. this for their birthday. Right. <laughs> a beverage. Okay, well, look good. It's good. Well, listen, congratulations. Appreciate right. that. Thank, Thank you very you. much. You. All right. That's, uh, <laughs> Speaking to Mr. Brazel before, uh, he's the interim leader of uh, the Conservative Party, and uh, as he was mentioning, he hopes uh, that he's not going to be keeping that job, and the only way that's going to happen is if, uh, is if Chess Crosby actually uh, takes the night and wins. Otherwise, Mr. Brazel will be staying in that job. Uh, so we've had a bit of a lull in the returns coming back. We've got uh, six polls left to start reporting, and as I mentioned, once we get uh, an indication that uh, we can give you some sort of indication um, as to statistically who's the winner. Otherwise, uh, we could be here until most of the polls are in because that margin um, is not enough to go with uh, just yet. But there is a much more buoyant atmosphere than there was in the beginning. Those first couple of polls, it's always kind of tricky in the beginning of covering by-election results. I mentioned that uh, you don't want to go a little too uh, one way or the other when those first few polls start coming in because certainly the early handful of polls uh, this room, you could hear a pin drop because the uh, initial couple of polls, handful only, uh, had Mr. Antle ahead, and uh, that's not what people here wanted to see. Uh, meanwhile, I suppose uh, the silence, I can only imagine where Ryan Cook is right now. He's over at uh, Paul Antle's headquarters, uh, on uh, just off to Vangers, where Mr. Antle has set up camp. And I should mention that uh, uh, Neil is over, uh, Carrie Claire Neil, rather, that her her campaign headquarters are over in the uh, on airport. Heights. NHA Jim Lester just uh, walked All in right. Here. Well, he's a man who knows a thing or two about by elections, although his by election was a fair bit different. I'll go see if I can actually uh, get a hold of Mr. Lester. Yes. Before you get to that, Anthony, uh, there's about a thousand people watching this on Facebook Live. So if you want to, uh, why don't you write in your predictions? Why don't you tell us who you think is going to win? And uh, we can get some conversation started there in the comment section. All right. Excellent. There's some advice from Jeremy. If you uh, would like to, you can actually get your uh, comments in and actually write them on Facebook. Well, your predictions is a very t t tight race here. Uh, Jim Lester is uh, here, of course. He is MHA. He's the last Tory to win a by-election. How are you? Well, you know, this is a, is a great day for everybody, of course, but, you know, it's a little bit sad for me because after tonight, I'm no longer going to be the newest elected MHA. So well, you're, that, you're that confident, are you? Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure someone else is going to get elected here tonight. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, the sting will be taken off a little bit by the way the results are going, so uh, I'll be proud to sit next to, uh, oh, I would aspire to be Mr. Crosby. Uh, in the front row. All right. Well, we'll see about that. Mr. Crosby still enjoying a uh, vote lead of about 160 votes or so. A year ago, it was November last year, in Mount Pearl North, your by-election, a much different affair. You you walked away with that compared to what's going on tonight. Uh, you know, I, Mr. Antle is a very strong candidate, but I believe that, uh, you know, the people of the district are, uh, you know, dissatisfied with the way the current uh, administration is governing our province and you know one of the big messages that uh, I put out in a by-election is you're not going to change government but you do get a chance to give them a grade on how they do govern and uh, you know my by-election was a great indication of that and uh, you know it looks like this one is going to turn out the same way. But also interesting in your case the Liberals decided to uh, basically take a very successful Liberal businessman Jim Burton a uh, very successful real estate agent and put him against you. In this case, they've, take, they've taken Mr. Antle, another very successful businessman. Do you think that uh, wealthy businessmen might be given a message from the electorate? Uh, I don't necessarily see that, but I, I definitely see like the uh, uh, the economy being one of the biggest weaknesses of this government. And by attracting uh, you know successful business candidates, they're trying to give the appearance that uh, you know they're looking to strengthen that aspect of government. And uh, you know I, 
I don't think it's doing that. You know, running a government or running even an opposition party is a, is a team effort. And, you know, it's, you can't, you know, pillar everything on one person. It has to, everybody has to work together uh, to achieve the results that, uh, you know, will see the benefit to the people of the right. province. Now, one thing, and I don't mean this in, a, in an uncharitable way, but Mr. Crosby is not an orthodox politician. Uh, what kind of leader do you think he'll be? Because he kind of he seems to speak his mind, and yeah. sometimes I'm not quite sure where his mind is. If you know what I mean, like he's he by his own he admits he's he's quirky. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something that really struck me about Chess because you know I kind of had uh, some preconceived uh, opinions of him because I did not know him. But uh, last uh, Frosty Festival, I took him out to Trivia Night. And so uh, both him and Tony Wakem were there and several other MHAs. And we were all sat around uh, and, you know, when an answer came up that Chess did not know 100% the answer, he would not speak. He would not guess at it unless he was 100% sure. So that kind of just, uh, you know, really struck me as, okay, you know, well, Chess is not going to gamble. He's going to be certain on what he does. And uh, that's something that I really admire about Chess. And, you know, he, he's brutally honest. And that's another thing that we need in politics for sure. All right. Well, listen, Jim Lester, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And uh, enjoy the rest of the night. It's a bit nerve wracking for some people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was driving out here. Uh, my wife and I were out for dinner with my grandmother. It's her, her birthday today, too. But, a lot of birthdays. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I said, oh, my gosh, Michelle, that's my wife. I said, I remember what it felt like when that eight o'clock dot hit. And I said, it, no matter how good your polls are coming in, uh, you know, prior to, these are the polls that matter right now. All right, Jim Lester, thank you very much. All right. Have a great evening. All right, that's Jim Lester. Jeremy, yes. So I'm just, I've decided to open up the Facebook app, just going through some of the comments. There are a lot of people uh, watching uh, from here and abroad. Oh, good, yeah. So obviously local people here. There's people in Prince Edward Island, people in Ontario. <laughs> Trying to get a little bit of uh, life back in the room here now. Yeah, 150 vote lead for Mr. Crosby right now. And what people people are very impressed with uh, with Kerry Claire Neal, the NDP candidate. Uh, lots of people are cheering for Chess Crosby here in the comments. We asked for predictions of who was going to win, and uh, yes for Chess, hooray for Chess. There seems to be a lot of support for Chess Crosby on Facebook. So if you have if you have something to say on Facebook, or if you have an idea of who's going to win, is it going to be Chess? Is it going to be Antle? Could Kerry Neal come back? No, that's impossible. That's mathematically impossible. Correct. But anyway, so if you want to have your say, uh, just type it into the comments now and uh, we'll read it out. Now, there is an MHA we can't reach. Well, who's that? He's hiding in the back there. Oh, I that's see MHA him. MHA Keith Hutchings. Well, we'll get to Mr. Hutchings at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I hope he's not getting used to those back benches back there. That's not really his style. Uh, but we'll find Mr. Hutchings in uh, in uh, just a bit. I'm Anthony Germain here with uh, Jeremy Eaton, no, no, going no, live no. at uh, from Chess Crosby's uh, headquarters. Oh well. Oh good. good. Mr. Hutchings is coming towards us. All right. So I've uh, got uh, Keith Hutchings is with us now. Uh, Mr. Hutchings, good evening. Good evening. All right. So. It's kind of one of those days or evenings where a lot of people are kind of, uh, oh, yeah. how are you feeling? Yeah, it's good. We, 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 good campaign. Just trying a good campaign. Uh, we thought it was going to be tight. Uh, we thought three parties would uh, poll, uh, you know, a decent vote, and we're seeing that here tonight. So right. it was poll by poll, street by street, house by house. Did you uh, work hard with Mr. Crosby on this campaign? Indeed, yeah, knocked on doors, uh, did some help in regards to uh, different prep for uh, some of the debates he had, those types of things. And uh, yeah, I've had a little experience in a few campaigns, so lend what experience and knowledge I could. All right. So we're, uh, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. Mr. Crosby created a very unique ad that he put on social media with him wielding a sledgehammer and putting signs in. Can you tell me about the strategy of that ad? I guess that he could drive it home at the end of the day. I guess that was the, that was the message, and I guess we'll see tonight. Hopefully, he'll do that. I, guess, uh, I was asking one of your colleagues, colleagues Mr. I don't think anyone uh, anyone questions uh, Chess Crosby is a is a smart, very smart man, great and a great lawyer, and, and has gained the respect of a lot of people through his class action Indeed, yep. uh, activities over the years. But by his own admission, he tell you know he told me you know I'm not I'm not like other people. I'm kind of quirky, right? How does that quirkiness work in politics? I think it's a, it's a fresh approach. I mean, Chess brings a, a different approach. Uh, obviously, he's had a, a great career, a, a, a breadth and uh, knowledge in various fields. So, you know, a different look, a different uh, a different outlook, uh, a different aura about him. And I think that brings a difference that people are looking for. And I think that's why he'll be successful. Now, you're an experienced politician, right? How long have you been in this? Uh, this is my 11th year elected. Right, so more than a decade. I, I asked this of one of your colleagues earlier. Shortly after Mr. Crosby announced that he was doing this, he said that uh, he didn't say that it's do or die, but he pretty much said, if I don't win this, then it's it's hard for me to, you know, the chance of me forming a government. Were you surprised when he said that? 
probably a little, but that's chess, and chess says what's on his mind, and yeah. I guess that was on his mind, and he, you know, what was on his mind, he said, so good for him. Right. And uh, what kind of leader do you think he'll be if he's successful by the end of the night? I think he'll be a strong leader. I think he's uh, he's a fiscal conservative. He's a little right of center, and uh, you know, we need some strong direction now in regards to the financial management of the province, which we haven't seen in the past three years. I think he'll bring that, and uh, collectively to attract new people to the party. On the other hand, if things change, and there are still four polls left to go, uh, how do you guys get your act together in time for a provincial election next year? Uh, well, we'll deal with that, that issue arises later tonight, but based on the poll and what we've seen so far, I'm pretty confident uh, Chester will pull it out and we'll have uh, uh, the leader of our party in the legislature come November. All right, Mr. Hutchings, thank you very much. And, thank you. Uh, we'll watch the numbers together. Yes, indeed. Thank Great. you. All right. Keith Hutchings, uh, he's a member of the Progressive Conservative Party and MHA in the uh, House of Assembly. And they're hoping that uh, there'll be another member in the House of Assembly who will also be a uh, blue member of that House of Assembly, of course, talking about uh, Chess Crosby. So a recap of the numbers once again. We're still looking at uh, about 1,550 votes, uh, 1,554 to be precise for Mr. Crosby versus uh, 1,403 for Mr. Antle. So you're looking there at a different of about... Uh, 149 votes, Jeremy, to be laser precise. Well, good math skills, Anthony. Uh, just going through the Facebook comments again, there's a lot of support for Crosby and, uh, you know, Charles Charles Pender, the former mayor of Cornerbrook, is actually watching us live from Alberta, and uh, he wanted to toss out his support for, uh, for Mr. Crosby.
excited? Oh, yes. What's your name? Leonard Connors. Leonard Sower? Connors. Leonard Connors. Hmm? Oh, good to meet you. Yep. Uh, how are you finding this tonight? Kind of good, back and forth? Good, good, yeah. good. Leonard Chess is in the lead. The PCs are in the lead. I'm really happy. I, I'm not from the riding, but I came over to support uh, Chess on behalf of his father. Okay. And uh, I got really turned against the Libras there about a month ago when I had to have uh, two teeth and one x-ray. Yeah. Take him from my face, cost me $740. I had to go back again and spend another 220 Yeah, why, and is, I, why is that the Liberals' fault? Well, they, t they don't have no uh, dental program for the seniors, and they don't have no eyeglasses. There's 385 bucks there. Right. You know, when you're a senior in this province, my friend, you threw out to dogs. And I didn't know until I turned 65, but right. I, you know, I, I don't act like 65. I'm more or less a teenager. I, I got that sense, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Where, so you, you mentioned you're not from the district. Where are you from? Well, Cape Shore originally. Uh, I, gr I grew up with John Crosby and the PCs. Okay. And I kept with the PCs all my life. They have a good policy. They have a good, you know, future on the future. And when I moved in here in St. John's, I, I moved to Alberta. I stayed with Ralph Swirl out there. And I say the Tory and I'm still a Tory, and I'm going, I was born a Tory and I'll die a Tory. All right, so you'll be blue right to the end. Right to the end, my friend. <laughs> it, was, it was good to see Mr. Cro John Crosby oh, and Jane here tonight. I, I had a picture taken on my phone. I lost it, but I got it locked in now. I think the war to him. And I'll give you a story about John Crosby. Sure. Is it a clean story? Oh, yes. Because there's a few that aren't. I don't want to hear one of those. No, no. Okay. Uh, on the 8th of December, 1978, I uh, was on a lip program in, in the district of St. John's West. The what program? Uh, on a lip program, no wharf program. Yeah. And uh, we didn't have uh, enough of money to finish it. He was MP in Ottawa, and Senator Manning's uncle got in contact with you know him and that. Right. And that Christmas, we had our Christmas dinner and had our unemployment for Christmas. And we were looking for a bleak. Christmas, a bleak winter, we wouldn't have no Christmas dinner, no nothing, only for that man right there. And I'm forever, ever grateful for him. So he was like uh, Bob Cratchit. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That's a great story. Oh, yes, and uh, like I lived on the Cape Shore, and I uh, there was all gravel road to John Cross, we came out there. You couldn't hang out clothes, you couldn't rise a window, couldn't do nothing. You know, when you read his memoirs, he points out that paving roads is a really good way to get elected. Oh, yeah, I got his book home, No Holds Bar, and that's going on my casket when I die. It's going to go in your casket? Yes, it's yeah. going on my casket. It is, it is actually a great book, yeah, and yeah. I say that objectively of the political memoirs that yeah. I've read totally. Oh, it's, it's, it is it's is No Holds Barred. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Actually, John Crosby told me that some people he wrote about don't talk to him anymore that are in that book. <laughs> well, let me ask you one last question. All right, Obviously, okay. you're, you're a big Crosby fan. Because yeah. What do you think the impact of the Crosby name is? When you see well, the name Crosby on the sign, Crosby on the ballots, is that a big draw? Oh, yes, it is. That's what draws a lot of people. Uh, and that, and his father's name was before that. And his father's name, he was in Ottawa, and Chess Crosby was a lawyer. He's a leader. He's not, in, he's not in it for a job. He's not in for the people. He's in it for, you know, for everyone. Yeah. Well, listen, I appreciate that uh, very much. Thank you for your time. Merci beaucoup. Well, merci beaucoup. Speak. You do speak French. Oh, uh, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, there. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of a story for I was kind of expecting. Uh, but that's uh, some of the loyalty you see in politics, right? Born blue and is going to die blue. He's going to put John Crosby's um, political memoir, No Holds Barred, on his casket. It's the kind of loyalty that uh, politics at a certain level, especially the kind of constituency road paving politics that John Crosby practiced, which he makes no bones about. He also makes no bones about the fact, and I think he believes now, that John Crosby has no problems with patronage so long as the people you appoint know what they're doing. Um, that's the kind of stuff that he outlines in his book. Of course, politics of a different day uh, in John Crosby's, but it does breed a lot of loyalty. It'll be interesting to see, I guess some student will have to write about the effect of the Crosby name. And as you see, people still sort of looking up there, 
Probably a little more anxiety now, but there's been a big low. We haven't had any returns in uh, in quite some time. And so, what's that, Jeremy? I'd say about 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, you yeah. know, it was coming in waves, coming in quick, 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 and now we're just sort of in yeah. a fall, and people are waiting. Uh, yeah. But there's a nice mix. I know that we've uh, interviewed a lot of the politicians and that gentleman then, but there are a lot of young people here. Most of them avoiding our camera like the plague because they don't want to be on the Facebook Live. Yeah. But there are. A, it's a good mix of people here. Some uh, some young voters, some middle-aged voters, some older voters. So yeah. it's not. Uh, it is a nice uh, mix here in the room of supporters for uh, Chess Crosby. Yeah, and the and the young ones are flexible enough to actually get under the camera, <laughs> and so they haven't been walking in the Both shot walking as much. That yeah, that's right. You can judge their age by that. The old ones just do what he just did. The young ones, huh? All right. So the votes have uh, kind of uh, slowed down a bit. And as I mentioned before, uh, Jeremy and I obviously here at uh, Chess Crosby's headquarters. We do have Ryan Cook at uh, Mr. Antle's headquarters. And so yes. we just want to address something. Uh, the reason we can't, people have been wondering why can't we switch back and forth to the other headquarters. It's uh, because we only have the one device to allow us to go live and we need a lot more equipment to do that. So that's why we're just here. <laughs> and uh, I think we, we picked this location because Chess was the first person to enter the race, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So that, that's why we, we yeah. did it the way that we did it. In case people are wondering why we're not switching and poor old Ryan Cook, Cook is just on the Twitter box. But it's just basically we don't uh, we don't have that capability with us right now. Is it Facebook Live, right? So it's not as though we're actually breaking through the usual here and now CBC Television Network to do this. And the other thing is that our plan is, in the event that the, there's a shift here and uh, things change and Mr. Antle becomes victorious, we will leave this headquarters and head to Mr. Antle's. Uh, so stay with us. We'll see what happens. It is still kind of fluid, even with that uh, 150 foot. How are you? I'm doing. I'm really good. I, <laughs> I'm good. You, you walked into the zone of danger. Oh, I so, my friends so, are watching from Vancouver, by the way. Are they? Oh, Vancouver. Yeah. Say yes. Hello. Hello, Vancouver. Uh, right? New, Newfoundland friends of Vancouver? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. They're watching uh, and uh, really interested in what's going to happen with this one. Well, Jeremy was just mentioning that there are people watching. It's an amazing thing about Facebook Live. They're watching all around the world, right. Newfoundlanders who actually care about politics here. What's your interest in this? Well, uh, the PC party, I've been a PC for a long, long time, right? Way back to my roots in the early days with my parents in Cornerbrook. And uh, when uh, Frank Moore's got in, so I have been a progressive conservative watching closely for many years. Right. right? Took a break when I was a journalist for a lot of years as well. Yeah, you have so, to do that, have apparently. To do that. Yeah, right. so, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what's it been like working on the Crosby campaign by election? Um, you know, thankfully, there was a big, there was a change in the wind, right, from the last election, which was 2015. So, um, you know, this time around, chess. Oh, he laid it out for us, you know, and he, uh, I felt that he was going to honor his word. He was, I felt he was smart enough to uh, fight, you know, the Muskrat Falls fight, to do what had to be done. Uh, he said he was not your usual kind of politician. Certainly. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, he's got a lot, a lot, a lot of years in, as we know. Yeah. But being the son of a great politician and a family of politicians. And uh, what I thought about that was this, is not, you know, some people may think, yeah, you know, he knows the political game, he does, but that's a good thing in that. He knows knows how to make things happen for the people in Newfoundland and Labrador. I believe he does. And uh, and I'm making him stick to his word. So that's awesome. So, you know, uh, he's got a believer in me and uh, I think it's great. Yeah. Obviously, since you, you got to actually have conversations with other other fellow Tories. Yes. Uh, and things. Was there a concern strategically that because um, the Liberals, Liberals clearly trying to use the, the Muskrat Falls, uh, pin the tail on the donkey, but pin it on chess, right? So, you know, Yes. Was there any fear that that sort of stuff would actually stick to him? Well, absolutely, all the way, which is why we had to work a little harder. You know, uh, I'm looking at Tony Oliver right now, and I'm thinking, you know, he made us get out early, he made us run, he made us go, he made us, like, get late at night. We got a vote wherever we could get a vote. We, it was a race, and we knew it was a fight against uh, the Liberals, and uh, and it still is, as we can see. It's a dogfight. So, uh, you know, but that just shows that people are ready to change. They're ready to, you know, to come back, swing back into action on the conservative side, because Muskrat Falls doesn't stick to the progressive because there were a lot of players at the table from all parties, particularly Liberals and the Tories. And it wasn't just the Tories. Maybe the decision at the end was, but it was the people of Newfoundland. We trusted everyone that they were making the right decisions with the right information. And the unions, so, the business yeah, community. All of them, all of them was driving all this. So it's a decision for all of us, you know. This whole thing is about Newfoundland and Labrador, and I think this by-election, whatever happens, 
it is going to be great for the future because it'll now show Newfoundlanders that they totally have a say mm -hmm. and uh, they're not going to let things like that happen anymore they know that they have a voice okay that they're just as responsible right. so you tell people your name because they might not oh. know you oh I'm Kathy Hicks and uh, camera hi Kathy Hicks <laughs> uh, I'm the candidate of record for St. John Center uh, but uh, yeah so uh, um, that's me I'm from Cornerbrook and but from St. John's as well <laughs> okay good like the whole problem I think it looks like you've done this before yeah <laughs> yeah thank you very much yeah we've thank talked you. into a microphone more than once yeah. thank you very much I appreciate well, thanks that thanks for being here tonight though it's amazing that's good all right uh, I'm Anthony Germain here at uh, Chess Crosby's headquarters can head back there to see the numbers 1,554 for Mr. Crosby, 1,403 for Mr. Antle, and 748 for uh, Kerry Claire Neal. You take a look at those percentages, still very tight between the Liberals and the Conservatives. And we're taking a look with just nine polls left now. And um, we'll see what happens now. I'm just sort of trying to read emails while I'm talking to you at the same time. So, you know what I think I'll do? I'll tell Jeremy if uh, if our superiors tell us we can make the call i'll let you do that whoa so You'll right the now, honor so right now the uh the there's four polls left right yeah so four polls uh left to come in now those are the pc numbers uh but it's uh, still too close to call from the cbc projection desk but they are monitoring this from uh from toronto so so as soon as they let us know, we will let you know. And I know a lot of people on Facebook are wondering why we're not showing the updates. It's because we haven't had an update in a long, long time. So it's it's they're coming. It's just been the last couple, the last four are slow to get in. Yeah. And I suspect uh, I suspect what's happened here too, with whatever the reason for the delay is, right now when you see those total votes, 3,705, there were 9,000 eligible voters. So one of the reasons we can't call it is because there are still. Uh, 5,295 votes to be counted or accounted for. Usually when you're in these kind of electronics of a, of a by-election, seeing something like this, it usually means that when the next vote come, when the next toll vote tally rather comes, excuse me, it'll probably be a significant number and you are either going to hear an extremely loud cheer in this room or you're going to hear gasping and potential vomiting. Uh, but the way things are going right now, it's back and forth. Uh, there's our anxiety. Now we've seen those numbers come in. So right now we see that's the most significant jump for Mr. Crosby right now. Almost 1,600 votes to uh, Mr. Antos got 1,435. Uh, so that is an increase, a uh, significant increase for Mr. Crosby compared to where we've been. But again, we're still talking uh, less than 200 votes in the difference. But there are only three polls uh, left to report. And we have, uh, we're getting close to almost uh, half of the votes being counted at 3,801. I mentioned with uh, more than just 9,000 eligible uh, voters. And of course, that does not necessarily mean that the rest of those voters are going to count. In fact, if we're near that turnout, as I said to Jeremy, this is a hard thing. We don't know for a fact, and it's impossible that the other 7,000 vote. But we're looking at a voter turnout of under 50% right now. So that's why we've got to see these three polls. So I, I, mis I mistakenly, for some reason, misled you, thinking that everyone would be voting, because that never happens unless it's a Soviet or Tin Pock dictatorship, which we are not. Uh, so we are getting down to the very end here, and uh, we'll see what happens with those three polls. But once those numbers come in, it's going to be clear uh, who has won. And right now, we've got Mr. Crosby with uh, 1,600 votes, and Paul Antle, 1,435. So that's a difference of about 160 votes. 160 votes or so. So here we go. So now that guy just emerged from an, a, a, one of the back rooms where I think they're actually calculating the numbers. So yeah. I think there could be something coming there now. So I think that uh, there seems to be a security that maybe waiting for the last numbers to come in. And they seem. And it was, there's another poll coming in. Got her, got her, got her. And now there's another poll coming in. There we go. The biggest jump of the night with uh, Chess Crosby getting a lead of 170 votes with only two polls left. Uh, two polls left. And there's that.
So there you go with 170 votes. Uh, I can hear people in the background saying we got her. This is done. Um, certainly the uh, the exuberance is there, and uh, there's more bubbly being opened in different parts of the room. So people are starting to celebrate uh, with those two polls uh, left to report. So we'll be staying here and uh, until we've actually got the official thing. It's going to be very interesting to see how things are going. So for a while, as you saw, like because there it took so long for the uh, the polling numbers to come in uh, to steal a line from Leonard Cohen, this place was uh, deader than heaven on a Saturday night. <laughs> but uh, you can see how quickly it turns around and how quickly and excited they get, like when the advanced poll numbers came out. So there's a door there behind Teddy. Can you get a shot of the door right behind Mike Connors there? It's a. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, they call themselves the nerds, and they say stay out of that room because that's where all the calculating is going on in that room behind us, and that's where the man emerged to start start of the chance. Trying to the fist bump, right? Oh, Paul, Paul Lane! Paul Lane has oh, just shown no. up. Paul Antle, uh, Mr. Antle is here. So Mr. Antle is here, which uh, was clear that he was probably uh, here for a reason. He knows which way this is going to go. So the Liberal candidate uh, Paul Antle has showed up, and so has Premier Dwight Ball. Premier Dwight Ball is here as well. Uh, there's been an indication that uh, things are going to uh, change here. So I'm going to try to... Uh... Right, so uh, Paul Antle now uh, shaking hands with John Crosby and Jane Crosby, saying hello. Premier Ball, also uh, here at headquarters, and he's talking to uh, John Crosby. And can... So, a uh, round of applause uh, for Paul Antle, who has uh, come here. So, numbers that we had, there was only one poll left to come. And only one more poll left, so I don't think we're going to get a miracle on the last one. So, yes. Man, yeah, listen, we ran a great campaign. We were, uh, pedal was to the metal, great volunteers. We did everything we should have done. And but you know what? It comes down to the voter. And I respect that. That's where we are. You weren't in the house, but you were in the halls. Are you content to stay in the hallway? <laughs> uh, look, you know what, I'm liberal, red, 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 so uh, whatever happens this way forward, I will always be there to help the party, help my premier, and uh, just keep pushing forward. Comments on the campaign went. Not, not so much the result, but just campaign. Look, you know what, we ran an honorable campaign, a respectful campaign. Uh, I'm very proud of my people. I'm proud of what we did as a, as a party and as a, as a team. Uh, so I have no regrets whatsoever. I'm, I'm very happy. When did you speak to Chester? Uh, well, I haven't seen Chess yet, and uh, uh, we came. We thought he'd be here by now, and uh, but that's okay. We got a chance to chat with uh, with his dad and his mom. So uh, if he's not here in a couple of minutes, we'll just take off. I got my own campaign team that I got to go and and say hello to. So where do you think you're wrong? Uh, you know what? I I. I there's nothing really that I can put my finger on at this point where there was any uh, misstep in our campaign at all. Uh, I think we did everything by the book. You know, it was a good, solid, hard-fought campaign. Don't forget now we're the Crosby name. We're in a, a, a traditional Tory district. Um, you know, we're in between elections. I mean, there's so many things at play. There's no one thing that you can put your finger on. There are two elections next year. I know you've tried this a bunch of times now. Uh, do you feel burned or are you still sort of thinking your political future? Well, you know, um, I was chatting with the Premier on the way over and uh, uh, I recollect that in th on three occasions now I have run against three leaders. So. Um, Maybe if ever I decide to do it again, maybe I won't run against another leader. <laughs> are you, you going to give him a break? We ran a great campaign. Paul was a great candidate, uh, very professional, very respectful. And every day that uh, he participated in campaign, 
Uh, I believe we had the best candidate that we could have uh, to go against Chess Crosby. But I'm looking forward to facing Chess now in the House of Assembly, but I can guarantee you we've got a great team. This is a, a district, that, of course, that has been the swing district for, for many, many years, but very proud of the efforts that Paul Lancel put into this campaign. We're going to go back now and speak to our uh, organizers and the, uh, the workers that have worked very hard on behalf of this campaign. We came here... Uh, no, this is what this is, is a message from Windsor Lake uh, that they decided tonight that they were going to vote for Chess Crosby and give a leader, I think, as Paul said. He's ran against quite a few leaders, a very courageous candidate for us. He did everything that he could. We put everything we could in this campaign. We've got a year now to face off, and I'm looking forward to taking the seat. So you let him run in a safe seat next time? Yes, he, deserves, he deserves a shot in the House of Assembly. He's a big contributor to the people of this province. He's going to continue to do so, whatever the next phase of his life is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So there you go, uh, Premier Dwight Ball and his candidate, his defeated candidate, Paul Antle, uh, sort of uh, shaking hands with the uh, Tories here as he's come uh, to uh, Chess Crosby's uh, headquarters. <laughs> and just trying to make my way through the thickness of the crowd as the uh, Premier as the Premier gets going. Of course, you might hear a few uh, beer bottles clinking on the floor here as they start to celebrate because clearly uh, Paul Antle uh, came over here to concede uh, to Mr. Crosby, but uh, Chess Crosby is actually not here. I believe he is somewhere nearby watching the results and he should be here in uh, in a few minutes. Uh, but there you have it. Perhaps I'll get Mr. Mr. Brazel back, the interim leader. So if I may interrupt you for one moment, if you don't mind, uh, once again, uh, so Mr. Brazel, clearly uh, Paul Antle has come over to concede. Uh, Chess Crosby's won. Exactly. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we had a great team here. The organizers put everything together. You know, Chess uh, worked day and night at this. And, you know, the electorate spoke. The electorate talked about wanting change. They wanted representation that would be reflective of the needs of the uh, taxpayers in this district. And they've got good representation in Chess. You know, I'm looking forward to turning the reins over to Chess as the full-fledged leader now in the House and outside the House of the PC party, but particularly having him in the House and challenging the government and keeping their feet to the fire as we move into the uh, provincial election next fall. All right, so obviously you won last year in Mount Pearl. Now that was Steve, Steve Cannon won that with 70%, I think twice, so it's a pretty strong Tory district. Is this win more significant? Oh, very much so. I mean, think, you know, we knocked off the former finance minister. Uh, we had, you know, a formidable foe in Paul Antle, you know, a big liberal who had been, you know, for years in, in, involved in the party itself and a very successful business person. It says that the people... You knocked off the former finance minister. She, she resigned of her own accord, oh, yeah, right? She, yeah, but, but at the end of the day, fair enough, but it was her district. Right. You know, there, there was no issues. The, the electorate didn't get rid of her. Right. You know, she had stepped down, so it was still a liberal district. So there should have been a, a heavy following. This says the tides have changed. People want change. They want to look at new policies and new approaches to how you address the issues that people have here, from the, not only from the electorate in Windsor Lake, but also in Newfoundland and Labrador. Right. So, you know, obviously we're looking forward to moving forward, and there's a uh, general election coming in 10 to 12 months, and we're going to be ready for it. All right. Maybe earlier than 10 to 12 months. Well, exactly. Right now, we've got momentum going. We've got a good team in play. The party is well organized. We're a unified uh, uh, organization here, and we're ready to move forward. So I want to ask you a nuts and bolts question. So you're the interim leader. Uh, you've got the opposition leader's office. Now you're going to hand things over at some point. So what's the transition between you and Chess going to be like? Well, you know, Chess will be gets, sworn in. For you know, Chess will get sworn in. And then, you know, obviously Chess has already been, you know, part and parcel, you know, from a leader's point of view of caucus. He understands how it works in that. Now the transition will just be around. We'll sit down and we'll talk as a caucus about our, our policies, how we move forward. We'll work the party around getting ready for the uh, provincial election. And and Chess will we'll start getting Chess uh, more familiar with the operations of the House of Assembly. He'll right. be ready. He'll be the lead when it comes to question periods. All right, well, it's going to be an interesting transition. Uh, congratulations to you and the Conservatives. I know that Mr. Crosby's on his way and uh, will wait for his victory speech. Uh, congratulations. Thank you, Jeremy. All right. Thank you, Anthony. So there you go. Uh, Anthony, yes. sorry to interrupt. We just got to take a little break. The battery's going to die on the camera, but we're waiting for Chess Crosby to arrive to hear right. what he has to say after this okay. momentous victory. So we're just going to go black for a couple seconds, but stay tuned. Yeah, we'll be right back for Chess Crosby's victory speech. Uh, don't go away.
developer, and uh, he has been the person that I've probably dealt with behind the scenes, as with the rest of the media. Congratulations. I, thank I you know very you much, hard. Anthony. Yeah, yeah thank so, you very much. So, uh, at various points this evening, were you nervous at all? I, I, you're, you always have to be nervous. You don't be overconfident in times like this, but I'm glad to see that Chess's message of true change resonated with the voters of Windsor Lake as I'm sure it will resonate with the people of Newfoundland and Labrador next year. Right. Now, as you know, the by-election, we don't have the usual thing with, you know, the CBC election desk calls or anything like that. Uh, what were you thinking when you saw Paul Antle come inside here? I mean, you know, you always, uh, you're always you always waiting to see the numbers that your own side has, and I, I was behind the scenes there and, and looking at what we had, but the moment I saw Mr. Antle and the Premier come, and uh, to be fair, I'm very happy that they came by to concede the race, and, you know, I, I knew it was the moment that we definitely had this. Right. So I'm very happy. So you've been working I'd, probably 24-7 over the last month at least uh, to get ready for this. How are you feeling? <laughs> I feel great. I'm going to have a great evening tonight celebrating, that's for sure. All right, well, listen, congratulations once again. What uh, what do you think was the key here to actually pull out this victory? Because Paul Antel, I mean, there was points in the e this evening watching the returns, you know, it's going this way, going that way. Yeah, well, I, I mean, if you look at the 2015 election result, Kathy Bennett got 66% of the vote. I think uh, the key here is that the people of Newfoundland and Labrador and the people of Windsor Lake are ready for change. They're looking for true change that Mr. Crosby offers, and he's offering that through his plan for lower taxes, affordable energy, and honest government, and I think that made the difference. All right. Well, Devin, once again, congratulations. You can go celebrate now. Yeah, thank you very much. You've Evan. earned it's it. Good to chat. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, that's Devin Drover. He was the uh, one of the key strategists. and. Uh, Actually, he was the kind of guy that, to be honest, Mr. Crosby had him doing everything. I could see it behind the scenes. So he was involved in organizing almost all of Mr. Crosby's events. And as I was saying at the beginning of this special broadcast on Facebook Live and YouTube, that's the kind of young political person who pours his life and soul into this. And that's the story for a lot of people in this room. So even if you're not politically active yourself, I guess the comparison would be, uh, I guess if you're thinking of yourself as a member of a really good sports team and you want to win that hockey game or a football trophy, that's really what politics is like. And so for the people here, complete elation they have won. And of course, I can only imagine what it's like at, uh, over uh, at uh, Paul Antle's headquarters uh, on Stavanger. For those of you who know Stavanger, he's just next to the Montanas there. Uh, what the happiness that is in this room right now is probably nothing but utter misery back uh, where, where Paul Antle is. Uh, as, but we'll have full coverage on what happened in each uh, each headquarters uh, tomorrow online and on CBC Radio. And uh, we're going to wait for Mr. Crosby to come here. Of course, I can imagine that uh, with John Crosby seated uh, in the front and with Jane Crosby here as well. Uh, I see that Mr. Crosby is getting up to go. When I say that, I mean leave. <laughs> Although we made a few jokes about that. And here we go. Cheering for chess. So, in order to correct one of my uh, more ridiculous brain mistakes earlier, John! Uh, Mr. Crosby is uh, heading out, and now uh, John Crosby is going to uh, head to the door, and I suspect that is to uh, greet his son, Chess, uh, who's expected here soon, and uh, we will try to capture that as Mr. Crosby comes in. And... Um, just going to try to get in a better location. It is a bit, it's a bit crowded, and as you can imagine, some of the uh, the wine is flowing as well. So people are walking in different capacities at this point. Uh, a lot of bottled up, uh, a lot of bottled up discipline for the days of the campaign. Well, it's been a, it's been a long day and it's been a long uh, campaign. Like obviously, uh, Crosby was first out of the gate very very quickly, and uh, they've worked very hard. And you know, all three sides have worked very hard. Now the place is going to erupt because Mr. Crosby has just entered the lobby and he's going to enter the building. Uh, Chess Crosby? Je right. Sorry, Mr. Crosby Jr. I guess. Right. Yeah, so Chess is uh, going to meet uh, his father at the doorway of the headquarters right here, and of course this will be the moment. There's John Crosby getting a kiss from his son, Chess Crosby, who will be the new MHA for Windsor Lake. You can only imagine, you're looking at uh, you know, a, political, a political legend, like John Crosby, greeting his son, and uh, Chess uttering a few words there too. Uh, Chess Crosby talking to John Crosby, as, uh, as John Crosby, of course, uh, such an influential and important politician, not just for this uh, province, but really for the country. And there's a whole thing. And there's Chess Crosby getting the hero's welcome here at his headquarters. And that is a pose that many of you remember that his father made famous, bumping those fists up in the air. Mr. Crosby, congratulations.
Well done. Well done. Thank you. Uh, you know, it was nip and tuck all through the night, but um, coming close would have been a victory in this seat where the, uh, the liberal total was two-thirds of the vote only a couple of years ago. So winning is a triumph. What does Mr. it mean? It's a triumph, and it means we have momentum going into the general election next year. It means trouble for the Liberals, but I do want to thank Mr. Randall and Mr. Ball for coming by. I just missed them, but it's uh, a tribute to our democracy that we can disagree about ideas but respect each other. How did you feel in your stomach when you're... The, the message is dissatisfaction with the last three years. And what else? What is your first plan now that you're opposition leader? Opposition leader in the House, you mean? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, it's what I promised people at the doors, that I will hold the Ball Liberal government accountable in the House. As the champion of people on the platform that I ran on, which is lower taxes, affordable energy, and honesty in government. Do you have any concerns that the Premier might call an election this spring, a snap election possibility in 2019? No. None? Because we have the momentum. He's not going to do that. How did you feel watching the votes come in? Did you feel like puking at any point? Anthony, I think I said to somebody earlier today that I've been watching, you know, decisions come in over my 30-year legal career, and I trained myself to have my expectations under control. So it was interesting, but, you know, the mathematics worked in my favor. Why were you here? Why didn't you come here? I'm sorry? Why didn't you watch the results with the rest of your uh, campaign well, staff? Well, you know, after many weeks and frankly many months, because I've been in campaign mode seeking the leadership of the PC party for two years now, don't forget, I thought that a couple of hours with my family was in order. Do you mind sharing anything, speaking with family, the comments that you just shared with your father? Can you share those with us, please? Well, I thanked him for coming out because obviously Dad is, you know, well advanced in years, and um, it's great that he managed to get himself down here and watch the results and support me like that. So, my thoughts about my father are the same ones he'd have for me. Uh, we support and love each other. How long have you been in the house that he served in back in the 1960s and 70s? Well, I'm sure it's not exactly the same house, but it's okay. <laughs> but how does it feel, I guess, to take on that kind of role, like as an MHA, the same kind of position he served? Well, you know, he was at a different stage of life than I am now, so uh, it, it's good to think that there's some continuity in the family that way, but I am my own man, and, my, and I will do my own thing. What was the hardest part about this campaign? Uh, getting calluses on my right hand knuckles, first of all. It took me a week. From the sledgehammer? The sledgehammer, no problem. In fact, that was a good stress release. Your mother said she was very surprised when you put your name forward to begin with, and maybe that she even advised you against uh, putting your name in this ring. Do you, uh, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you make of that advice at this point? Uh, well, I'm sure she had my best interests at heart. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't really thinking of myself when I did this. I was thinking of what the province needed, and I'll continue to think of that. What kind of message does your win send to the Liberal Party? So, what I said to voters at the door was, if you're happy with the last three years of the Liberal government under Mr. Ball, then by all means vote Liberal. If you're not, and you think that Mr. Ball and his party and his government need to be held to account in the legislature, then you should think of voting for me. And voters took my advice. So Mr. Ball will want to reflect on that. I think your supporters want to hear from you. What, what's the message you want to give these people? Because they were here kind of ooing and aahing all night. What do you want to tell them? Because obviously you don't win something like this without a team. Well, Anthony, you're absolutely right. And, you know, it's get out the vote and it's organization and it's dedication to a cause. We were the underdogs. We had to climb a steep hill where the Liberals had two-thirds of the vote the last time. 
So, um, yeah, you know, policies have something to do with that. Uh, values have something to do that, with that. The performance of the government in power that we're impeaching has something to do with that. But delivering that achievement belongs to the people in this room who are the campaign workers. And you're absolutely right about that. How long's your speech? No more than five minutes. Okay. What's your first move now as, uh, as a seat winner? I'm, I'm sorry? What's your first move as, uh, as a seat winner? Uh, tomorrow to go in and to, um, you know, just touch in with the people in the, uh, in the leader's office and, uh, and the caucus, all of whom worked hard. I see Mr. Davis here, the previous leader. I want to thank him, of course. I, uh, and um, Dave Brazel, the uh, interim leader of the opposition, as it turns out. Unfortunately, Dave lost the job today, but we'll try and make it up to him. And, uh, and you know, thank people who worked so hard. And I deserve to go moose hunting next Thursday, which is what I'm doing. Do you have any comments on uh, uh, the NDP candidate, Karen Neal? She showed about 20% about of the vote. Any comments on her campaign? Well, I have comments on both Mr. Randall and her. Uh, it takes guts, grit, and determination to put yourself out there and be a candidate, uh, particularly in a hotly contested by-election like this. So I want to extend my congratulations and gratitude to them for their um, for their metal in doing that. Uh, sorry, what was the rest of the question? No, that was it. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's. Uh, Conservative leader uh, John Cro that's John Cro Chess Crosby. There's too many Crosbys in this room. Uh, victorious, and you can expect he's going to get a cheer once the people finally get to see him. And then he will be giving what he told me is a five minute speech to his supporters. Uh, so we'll stay for that. And once Mr. Crosby has delivered his victory address, uh, we'll wind things down with a special, special Facebook Live. Sorry, this seems, there's a lot of movement around here, so I'm just trying to make sure cables. Uh, the last thing we want is a lawsuit against the CBC for injuring a Tory tonight as the cables go backwards. So we're trying to keep that. But obviously, a lot of people going to shake uh, hands. Uh, Chess Crosby now is talking to his mom, Jane. And uh, of course, uh, Jane Crosby telling us earlier she was kind of surprised that uh, her son Chess decided to do this. I'm sure, as a person who endured many, many political battles, uh, you know, beginning with her, you know, John Crosby, long time ago, over in fighting with Joey, the leadership against uh, Bryant Mulroney, uh, Cod Moratorium. I mean, the list of things that Jane and John Crosby have been through, she knows. If anybody knows how difficult this game can be, uh, it's hers. And now she's watching her son uh, basically taking the first step to becoming uh, the official leader of the opposition. I think the House reconvenes first week of November. I'm pretty sure, going by memory, so correct me on social media if I'm wrong. But uh, this certainly is a big day for, for Chess Crosby. A lot of people uh, in here, not in this room, surprised, but certainly some other political observers uh, thought that this was Paul Antle's chance, um, and it did not turn out that way. So Mr. Crosby slowly making his way to the front of the room, a room which has gotten warmer and warmer as this uh, election night has gone from counting votes uh, to a celebration. The essentially the Conservative Caucus, the Paul Davis, David Brazel. A moment of celebration. So Mr. Crosby is trying to make his way to the front. getting, of course, uh, more handshakes from supporters. Lots of high fives. There he goes. because, of course, without organization, there is no victory. And we had organization. 
I see Bill Matthews back there. He was kind of like a godfather behind the camera. <laughs> the only person in this room tonight who has ever won more campaigns than Bill Matthews was my own father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the heckle of the knights. See it. I have acknowledged my opponent, my, both my opponents, Ms. Neal and Mr. Antle, and it takes guts and determination to enter a contest like this or any electoral contest. So I salute them for having those qualities. <laughs> Also, the Liberal leader and Premier, Mr. Ball, for coming here. Unfortunately, I, I missed the two of them, and I salute him as well for having those qualities that make for democracy, which involve respect for people while contesting over ideas. <laughs> as you know, as a judge, cannot be involved in political matters, asked me to acknowledge and uh, express my gratitude to her. <laughs> 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 oh Which I, I'm doing. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> And my three daughters who, you know, their family and Catherine is here. The other two have been here on and off in the last couple of weeks. We love you. <laughs> and, and there's somebody I want to acknowledge. And if I went through the, the list of, uh, of people that I should acknowledge. That's <laughs> the President of the United States. <laughs> Maybe he finally wants to see the play. <laughs> Oscar, I'm not sure where he is. Yeah. Oh, Oscar. Yeah. Here, Oscar. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. The guy with the half mutton chop. <laughs> Oscar has slaved long and hard over his computer, getting all the data organized, and Bradley made a special point of asking me to acknowledge your Special efforts, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> there are many others I'd be keeping you here way too long if I acknowledged everybody who deserves special thanks. So, look, this was a hard hill to climb. This was a district three years ago where the liberal candidate took two thirds of the vote. It was always going to be tough. If we came close, it would be a victory. If we won, it would be a triumph. you can vote. But if you want someone with an alternative vision in the House of Assembly, whose job it is to hold the Liberal government to account, you know who you can vote for. And we know who they did vote for. to replenish its finances, 
to find great candidates to run for the PC party. <laughs> district association and to hold the government to account in the house of assembly whether it was going to be me or whether it was going to be dave brazel <laughs> <laughs> to account for, it is to deliver lower taxes, to deliver affordable power, and to deliver honesty in government. You see um, Chess Crosby shaking hands with Tony Wakem, still cracking jokes. Tony Wakem, of course, challenged Chess Crosby for the leadership. Will likely be a candidate, I would suspect, uh, in uh, the election next year. Interesting that uh, Mr. Crosby doesn't seem to think that that election will be called early next year, but we do know it will be next year along with the federal election. So it's going to be a very busy, busy year in politics in Newfoundland for 2019. I'm Anthony Germain here with Jeremy Eaton. I want to thank uh, Jeremy. It's always a pleasure to work with. Always a pleasure. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Jeremy. For me. It was great being with you. Uh, Jeremy will be filing, of course, on this on CBC Radio. So for all the stuff that we might have missed, I don't think we missed too much. Although I do think, I think voter turnout was above 50%. They don't have the numbers up, but I was trying to do the math. And I think it was a pretty good turnout, especially for a by-election. But for all the details, the follow-up, and of course, given the limitations tonight, some of the reaction from the other camps, the politicians who lost, that will all be on CBC Radio and on our website, cbc.ca slash NL. For all of us at CBC NL, I want to thank you for tuning in to our Facebook Live special and on YouTube. And of course, uh, we'll have more on this on Here and Now. Chess Crosby will give Debbie Cooper a feature interview on tomorrow's show. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you around.